when you will start working as a smart contract auditor in the company you will get the contract and you have to audit the contract once you've done with the auditing part you have to generate the report about the auditing contract which you have done in that you have to mention every single detail that what are the vulnerability you have found in the contract what are the state variables we have what version we have how many state changes is happening what are the cost of each function in terms of gas consumption what are the state changes we have how many loops we have how many vulnerabilities we are protecting in terms of hacks so we have re-entrancy attack there are tons of attack which you have to highlight every single functionality so it's very important that you have to provide all the details about the smart contract which you have audited in the report and that report need to be submitted to your manager if you are working in the company or if you are working as a freelancer or agency owner that's what you have to provide to your client after that it's their responsibility that whether they want to upgrade the contract as per the vulnerability which you have mentioned or they just want to have the auditing because right now we have two types of things the one is auditing and the other one we have is the smart contract development these are the two different segments so recently i got a contract for auditing for an NFT marketplace and that's what I have audited and I will show you that what structure you have to follow because when it's come to auditing you can't design your own architecture we have to follow the industry norm which we have to deliver and according to that we have to simply provide all of the details about the contract so this is the entire audited report about the contract so this is the contract which I have got for auditing in that we have a lot of feature like minting NFT generating NFT transfer bidding and tons of feature it has to the NFT layout so let's talk about the layout first so the very first thing you have to do is to give the name you have to give this particular one like smart contract security auditing report that's the title is going to be on top after that you have to give the name of the contract that what is the name of the contract here i have called nft marketplace implementation analysis these keywords are important so make sure to follow the industry norm after that you have to give the details about the contract that what is contract what are the interface you are using so we are using the external libraries like open zeppelin for creating the nft and transfer and monitoring all of that so we are providing this we are using this particular interface then we have also mentioned the solidity version we are using because some clients wants to have a different version as per their requirement so you have to mention the version name and when this particular contract got audited so you have probably noticed this that if you go to any exchange and you will see go to the contract section you will find that there is a details about the about the contract audited you will get that in that they mention that when the contract was got audited so that's the details we have to provide name interface solid version and we have the auditing date then you have to give a brief description about the smart contract so that's what i have done it's an nft marketplace we have implemented the erc 721 uri storage for the nfts and we are using the open seven package that's all you will find it's a small description about the contract that what it is exactly so once you're done with that after that you have to give the contract overview that what are the main features we have in the contract so we have the erc 721 implementation we have the listing functionality we have the sale mechanism token mechanism and ownership because the token can be buy with the help of the nft or nft we can be also used for buying token so that's feature is there once you're done with that after that you have to come back to the statistics so you can simply mention that how many function do we have so total number of function we have 11 like state variable we have five mapping one event one and modifier is one so that's what we have mentioned after providing the stats about the functionality and the state variable and the mapping after that we have to explain about the critical findings we have done in the smart contract and the vulnerability we have found so that's what we have here so this particular contract is vulnerable to re-entrancy attack and that's what we have highlighted here that this particular function called create market sale is a vulnerable function here i have given you the overview because it's a long contract in this particular function what we are exactly doing that we are changing the ownership we are changing the state so when the user will list the lifts the nft for sale there is a change so before we actually listing that nft to the marketplace we are not updating the user so that's the problem we have found that's what we have highlighted here now if i come back here that's what i exactly have explained here and here i have given the explanation with the solution that this is the fix he or she has to do so before we actually transfer that we have to simply update the state about that particular user then we have to simply do the transfer so once we change the state then we have to do the transfer and that way we can prevent so that's the solution we have also provided in this particular function so that's the one finding we have got it here we have found another issue called missing access control and that's what you can see here we have the function called only order means i hope you can understand what is only all or we utilize in the contract because whoever will deploy the contract become the owner of the owner of the smart contract and the same logic can be utilized in terms of if you have multi stakeholders so you can simply allow user to call the asset which they hold 
So you can simply utilize this module. And that's what we have here because this function we are calling in multiple places. So we can simply minimize this by building a simple model and that model is going to check in every function. So we don't need to call this function over and over again. So that's the second finding we have. Now come back to the fourth one, high security finding in which the smart contract developer forget to do the validation check for the price. So this is there is no problem in that. But there should be a certain limit for the price. You can't take any number. I hope you have a proper number idea that how much a price can go of this particular NFT. So you have to set the maximum limit. You can't exceed the amount because if you have the higher amount, maybe the user don't have that much fund and he mistakenly put that fund in the contract. So it's going to be failed or maybe the gas consumption. If you're transferring huge amount of money, the gas consumption is going to be high. So that could be one of the reason it will fail. So you should always check the higher price check. You cannot go beyond this particular price. If you want to go it, you have to simply consult with the, like, the market owner or you can simply consult with the developer and then they're going to tell you what exactly you have to do. So it's always important to set the higher cap limit. And that's what we have explained here. Here we have this call input validation check. And that's obvious. You cannot expect any data from the client side. You have to simply validate the data. Then you have to pass it in the contract. This validation can be happen in the front end side, but you as a developer, you have to do a validation in the smart contract as well. You have to check that if it's required a string, it has to be a string. If it's coming in the form of number, you have to convert that into a number and then pass into the function or you can simply fail the transaction that pass the proper data. So you have to do input validation check because in the career token function, we are getting the URA of the NFT and we are getting the price and the state. So that's what we are passing. So we have to always check that it is a number, is it a call data or it is a simple string. What we exactly passing into that particular input field. That's what we have. Now here we have come CBR funding, which is coming from gas optimization. And this is happening because it's not a good idea to use loop in the contract. Because in this three function, the developer utilize loop for finding that which NFT belongs to which user. And that's, there's no problem in that. You can simply utilize that loop. It's absolutely fine. But when you include that, it's going to cost higher consumption of gas because the loop will run. It will check for the user data because the data is in the form of array. So it will run the loop and the more it will run, it's going to consume more gas. So it should always better that you should build a some sort of different mechanism to finding the user information instead of running a loop. So the gas consumption is going to be very high. And that's what we have highlighted. And here you will find we have other option as well. We have mentioned the functions that what is the problem, what approach can be taken. That's all we have highlighted here. So these are the couple of funding I have found. And here we have some regular update, which we want to provide to our client that they have to maintain the consistency. So they need to provide a brief documentation about the smart contract. And this should be in a public document and that other can utilize that how things are happening in the contract. And that way you will build trust and you have to follow the naming convention. You can't put anything just like that. Like you have called one function fetch NFT and the other function you're calling fetch token. You can't call it that. You have to follow a particular structure according to the project which you are building. And that's what we have highlighted. Here we have the contract testing coverage analysis. So we have given a complete overview that what are the analysis we have done. So we have the token UI validation, transaction, reward, optimization. We have a price calculation, which is important. We have to calculate the price. You can do like in the front end side, but you should be sure in the smart contract as well, because in the front end, the user can make the mistake, the developer can make the mistake. So you have to be very sure in the contract. And here we have a detailed recommendation that what it can be utilized in the contract to get removed. We have also highlighted some of the packages which the user can utilize it to update their contract. So that's all we have here, all the functions with the improvement we have provided. Here we have given some information about the updating of the smart contract and optimization they can do. And this is the conclusion here. We have highlighted that what are the vulnerability because so every single analysis we have done in the contract, we have given a label like whether it's a high risk or low risk or it's what kind of attack are possible in that particular function. That's all we have highlighted. Here. So you can see reinterest cat is a very critical one. It has to be fixed. Here we have the gas optimization. You can go with that. There's no problem. But if you improve it, it would be better. You need to build a documentation, good quality documentation. So that's what we have highlighted here. Here we have the auditing scope and limitation that's all we have highlighted that smart contract code review security vulnerability assessment gas optimization analysis best practice then we have the this audit does not cover what are the things we cannot cover that's also we have to provide because we don't know what is happening in the front end we don't know what is happening in the off chain we don't know 
that what is the business logic of the client like he might following a different business logic in the front end size and the contract is totally different so we don't know about it we have to know that what kind of external contract is attracting like we have a feature in the contract which allow us to approve and here we have given the disclaimer about it so this is the standard structure we follow for generating the smart contract auditing the report and you can go with that it's a industry standard it's depend that what kind of contract it's there what kind of features is there if the contract is big if it has more libraries it's going to be a very big but the structure is going to be the same this is the layout we follow this is the layout we follow so now i hope you know how to do the auditing what exactly you have to do how you have to do the analysis how you have to build the structure of the report so what i have done i have converted this entire information into an infographic so i can submit to my to my client to my manager uh, overview of the contract so i can simply open it i can show you so it's going to be in a in a file so i will simply make on a live and it's going to open this one so this is what i have developed a simple web page in which i have highlighted the name the detail about the contract the statistics the risk label and the critical funding high risk medium risk and the key recommendation which i have highlighted so that's how you have to generate the report which you have to provide to your manager to your client if you're working for any founder or startup founder that's how you have to do it so now i hope you guys have understood that how exactly you have to do and build the auditing report which you have to submit it to your client so that's the only thing from my end if you have any question any doubt definitely let me know in the comment section i'll definitely try to help in that have a wonderful day. bye